Hello everyone, my name is Abhin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Go language. Now till this point we have talked about the basics of Go language, we have seen what functions are, we have talked about variables. It's time to focus on some advanced part. And we'll start with deferred statement. Now what is deferred statement? To understand that what I will do is I will create two more functions here. So let's say function A and then this function A does some work. And of course we'll be having one more function here which is let's say function B in this case. And then this function B as well does something. Uh, so let's say in, in function B I just want to print uh, print uh, print ln and here I'll print in B. That's it. Nothing much. And in A as well let me print two statements. So at the start I will say fmt dot print ln and here I will say will say A begin and then at the end last statement here we'll say A ends. So basically we have two statements here we have A begins and A ends. So this should work right and of course uh, to make it work we have to call these functions. So I can call A from main of course we need to call it right. So from main I will call A that's the only thing I want to do. And then from A I want to call B but from where I will do that. So once I say A begins after that let me call B. So what do you think what will be the output? Of course we all know it will go in a sequence right. So from main it will call A and from A it will first print that A begins and then it will call B and B will print in B and then it will print A ends. So basically the output we are expecting is A begins in B A ends. Let's verify if that works. Uh, let me save this example and go back to your terminal and let's execute the command which is go run that is go dot go if I say enter and you can see we got the output and we got the output which we are expecting. So we got begins in B ends. Okay now what I want to do is so I want to evaluate B but I don't want to execute it. I want to execute B only after A. So yes I am calling B inside A but then I want to execute B only after the execution of A. Uh, so to do that we can use a statement here which is defer. So when you say defer what it will do is it will it will evaluate B but it will execute it only after the execution of A block. So from, from where we are calling it. So we, let's let's save this and let's go back and run and you can, you can see we got begins, ends and B. That means B is executing after A. Now you might be thinking why someone will do that. If you want to achieve that you can simply write B after A right. See even if you do that even if you call B at the end statement still you are executing B inside A right. So I want to execute B after A. Uh, so this will be useful when you are let's say if you have a resource and you want to close it. So maybe uh, in the first line of A you are creating a resource and then you will be using that resource later as well. But at some point you want to close it. So you can so you can create a function where you can close this statement and then you can make that function call as deferred. So that it will be called after the execution of the current block. Right. So yeah that's how we can use deferred. In fact we can do one more thing here. What if you have multiple uh, deferred statements. Uh, so what I'm saying is let's say instead of this example now let me just remove A and B. And let's focus on main only. So I will go back to main. And here what I will do is let me use a for loop and from this for loop I will say for and this for loop will start from let's say 0 and then I will go from i less than maybe let's say 10 and i plus plus. So basically we have a for loop here and then in this for loop I want to print the values. So I mean I want to print the value of i that's it nothing much. And of course you know when you when you do this things you will and let's say after end I will say bye bye. So here I will say fmt dot print ln. Let me say bye. Right. So at the end, if I go back and if I run this code, uh, you can see we got all the numbers, and at the end we got bye. And this is what we I was expecting. But then what if I make this call as a deferred call? So of course print ln is also a function. So you're calling it. So basically I'm calling print ln. And I'm saying that it's a deferred which means it will execute only after the execution of main. Now what do you think what will be the output? Because this time we don't have one deferred we have multiple deferreds. Because we are doing that in a loop. So what will be the sequence? Will it go from 0 to 9 or will it go in a reverse order? 
because see, if you are calling something and if you are saying it will execute later, it has to save it somewhere, right? It has to maintain that record. You have to execute println uh, 10 times after this execution of main. So where you will store it? So if you store that in a queue, of course in queue we know that it will be first in first out. So whichever comes first, which will execute first. So it will execute the println of 0, println of 1 and then list goes on if it is Q. But what if this is a stack? In stack we all know it is last in first out. So let's see what happens. And what do you think when this Bible is printed? So there, I want to know your guess. So you, you can use a comment section and comment your answer there. Uh, will it be printing by first and then printing all the numbers or will it print all the numbers and then will print by? So let me know your thoughts. I'm just going ahead and running this code. Okay, so there's a twist. You can see we got by at the start itself. It's because this statement will be executed only after main and main is printing by. So main job is done. But then you can see everything, all these values are getting reversed order. It's because the function calling will be done with the help of stack and stack follows last in first out. So even defer follows last in first out, right? So that's how you work with deferred. So that, that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. So one thing to remember about deferred is it's, so whenever you call a particular function and if you make it deferred, it simply means that function will be executed after the execution of the surrounding block, which is main in this case. So that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Let me in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.